Thanks for tuning in to our seller interview series. Up today, we've got a testimonial business for sale in the software niche. Created in April 2011, this business makes $1,683 per month in net profit. The listing number for this site is 40591. Now, we do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the sites they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. Now, we've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Thanks for coming on, Sean. Hey, thanks for having me. Greatly appreciated. Yeah, man. It's glad to have you here. Uh, before we dive into the questions, just a quick summary for our listeners out there about this business. Like I said, I was built in April 2011 as monthly revenue of $2,511 with expenses sitting at $828 and a net profit of $1,680. That is a six-month average. And included with the sale is the domain, obviously, the hosting and marketing accounts, and also the Stripe payment merchant account. So, Sean, can you tell me a little bit about your background in building and running an online business? Is this kind of your first one or have you been in the space for a while? Yeah, thanks. My wife and I uh, co-founded a web marketing agency about a decade or so ago. And about five, six years ago, we were continuing to get requests from clients about you know, video testimonials and how can they start to capture those over the web from their clients. And we did our due diligence. You know, We researched the market. We even went out and signed up our clients on behalf of our clients. We signed up for some softwares and tested them out. We weren't really happy with anything that we saw. And that became such a growing request and a growing need from our client base that we eventually just decided to go out and build our own software. It's a pretty interesting business. So for someone that's not familiar with you know this kind of business model, or maybe just brand new to the world of online business in general, could you describe briefly how this makes money? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So it's a subscription-based software. I think we call that software as a service, right? So what happens is businesses that are looking to capture testimonials from their clients sign up for the free trial. It's a 30-day period. What they do then is they typically build a campaign within our software. They send out some emails or some clients will actually hang some sort of a call to action like a graphic or a banner on their website or within their email newsletters. They send it out to their client base and basically they, you know, a handful anywhere from let's say as little as 2% to 10% of their base or other website visitors if they happen to have existing customers on their website will record a testimonial. What happens next is after the trial period if they you know, have some good results, they like what they see, they'll typically sign up for one of four different types of paid plans and depending on which plan they pay for, it really dictates how many new videos per month they can capture from their client or customer base. That's interesting. So this is a subscription model, yeah? So people are, it's a recurring income for every client that has signed up for it? That's correct. Yep. It's, it recurs on a monthly basis. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so why are you selling the business? Why not keep it and grow it along with your ad agency? Yeah, good question. Um, our ad agency is, a, is a really a full-time commitment between managing you know dozens of active projects for client engagements, managing a handful of employees, we just simply can't find time to focus. We can't find the energy you know, to put forward into this software initiative right now. So it's been on our radar screen as something we'd like to hand off for about a year now. And we're really excited about the prospect of you know, handing it off to someone who can really start to take it to the next level. Yeah, it's a very interesting project. So what do you have planned for after the sunny ideas for the money? Maybe go, come to Thailand and hang out with me? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a nice problem to have? I wish. New employee, basically, is what we have planned for that money. We're really looking to uh, scale and, and grow our ad agency. So we're really hoping to um, you know fuel our primary business, as we call it, our nine to five day job. But anyways, we're, we're looking to basically you know onboard a new employee for our main business. That's uh, fantastic. You know, uh, what we found at Empire Flippers is one of the biggest contributions to our own growth has been, you know, apprentices like me and the other people, the management sure. team that's been able to leverage so much. So it's, it's amazing just how the difference one person can make for a business. So you bet. You bet. Yeah. So the business rather was built in April 2011. Could you describe a bit of the trajectory of the business? I'm assuming it was pretty easy to get customers right away since you already had so many people wanting demand for this. But have you found that it's attracted other customers outside of just your clients as well? Yeah, absolutely. What was kind of a no brainer for us about developing the software was the fact that we did have a handful of clients. You know, we had that break even number in mind immediately. And we could basically break even in three to six months based on you know, existing client demand. So that really made it an easy decision for us at the time. 
since then, of course, I think some of our initial clients are still subscribers, if I'm not mistaken. I think we have a handful, maybe three or four people that have actually been with us for you know, five plus years since the beginning, which is really cool to see. Wow. They're still finding value in it, which what is a nice. What a great lifetime value. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They certainly, um, you know, help to increase that lifetime value number. But yeah. So then of course, over the years, we've gotten a little bit more aggressive with some of our AdWords and pay-per-click marketing. We really haven't done a lot with Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn marketing necessarily, but you know, we have done some aggregator site marketing a little bit, I would say. We have done some pay-per-lead programs through a website called websitemagazine.com, which has been uh, very successful. So yeah, we've definitely, I think maybe 5 to 8% of existing customers are some of our original customers. And then since then, it's just kind of grown from there. As far as the trajectory is concerned, you know, I, I think we really fell into the niche by accident, so to speak. I mean, we, we knew that video was kind of a hot channel or a hot medium on the internet of communication five years ago. And I think, you know, by the fact that, you know, Twitter and Instagram, I mean, there's so many different apps now incorporating video into their offerings. I think we somewhat got lucky. I mean, I'd like to say that we predicted that we certainly didn't. But um, video (laughs) is certainly one of the most exciting and impactful and effective, you know, mediums of communication on the web. So, we're kind of in a cool space and a cool niche, and I think there's definitely um, room for growth. And I don't think that video is going anywhere. I mean, I would imagine that for the next five to ten years, video is still going to be as effective and as popular as it is today. Oh, I agree. I think it's just going to become even more important as time goes on. Don't uh, knock yourself short. You're obviously a pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> Rather- so. Uh- <laughs> good, right? Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, uh, what what you learn from this business that you might apply to your current business that you're working on, or maybe future projects? Is there anything about it that just really worked for you? Yeah, I mean, we really take the same approach, or we took the same approach with this software as we do with our ad agency. I mean, we've always looked to kind of do what's best for the client or for the customer, and oftentimes we find ourselves helping with their strategy. You know, with their campaign strategy over anything else. So we've really done a nice job of making ourselves available to our clients on more of a strategic basis than just strictly like a bug or a, a you know issue fixing basis. We've always shared some of those, you know, analytics and previous client campaign experiences with our newer customers as best as we can. I think we have a tool or an offering right now on the website that is generating leads, which is called, I believe, like some of the most popular testimonial campaigns we've seen. And we've kind of developed a 10 page PDF guide on some of the experiences that our own customers and that we've learned through their campaigns over the years. So I just really feel that it's so important. I guess it applies to any business, really. It's pretty broad, but it's so important to, you know, help people in their decision making process and help people, you know, with their strategy, so to speak. What we found is if we can help our customers be successful, they'll stick around for a while. And as we mentioned, it's a monthly subscription. But what's so neat is the way that the software is set up right now, and it may not be the best way necessarily. There could be some room for improvement here. But the way that it's currently set up is people can come in, they can launch a campaign, they can actually disable the campaign and downgrade to what's called our free plan. We see so many people sign up, launch a campaign for three to six months, downgrade, regroup, reestablish their next campaign, and then re-enable a new campaign with us. So a typical client might actually pay for six out of 12 months, so to speak, out of the year. It's, it's really hard to say. Some people are more aggressive than others. Some people launch multiple campaigns at once. Other people kind of walk before they run, launch a campaign for two to three months, pause, regroup, and then relaunch another one a month or two later. So it's really neat to see how sticky our software has been with so many of our customers over the years. It's pretty interesting. So they'll re-up their subscription as the time comes to do another testimonial campaign. Correct. It's a very intriguing business. When I first saw a testimonial business, <laughs> like, what, what does that mean? Right. It's a pretty exciting business, from, at least from my perspective. So what have you tried with it that didn't work? Anything that just like flat out failed for you in promoting this business? Or maybe something you were working on to get it up and running that didn't work? Yeah, you know, I don't know if we've ever been very 
you know, so aggressive where we really spent a lot of time, focus and, you know, energy and, and, and money in, in one direction and it didn't work necessarily. I'm trying to think here. We've done a lot of, you know, very organic link building initiatives over the years through articles. We've, we've had a lot of write ups on like Forbes.com and Business Insider and Website Magazine has helped us with a couple articles. Those have all worked pretty well. I mean, those are still generating a fair amount of free trial conversions trying to think of anything that necessarily didn't work. You know, I I will say this. I mentioned there was a paper lead program through Website Magazine. Now, that didn't work, and I'll tell you why. And it's one of the, I think, I feel it's one of the big opportunities here. Website Magazine charges a very small fee when and if their visitors, which we feel are a perfect target market for our app. When someone downloads a white paper or a PDF guide on Website Magazine's website, generates a lead, we pay for that lead. It's a very affordable price per lead. That didn't work for us. We saw a ton of traction over 30 days. I think we generated maybe somewhere between 20 to 30 leads in a month, which is very good. Averaged about a lead per day, which we were very happy with. The problem is, and I think one of the opportunities for someone looking to take this business on, is we have zero lead nurturing in place. So when people come to our website, we have a steady and healthy number of people downloading guides on our website, there is no lead nurturing in place to support them. When that happened on Website Magazine, when we were involved with that paper lead program, there is nothing to support them. There's nothing to further educate them. There's no email marketing automation in place to eventually you know, drive them down and invite them into the free trial offer. So it's one of the things that we participated in. I think that was in the last six months or so earlier on this year. We wanted to test it out in the hopes that if it looked like it would work, we could then support it with some marketing automation. We never came around to doing that. So that is something that we did. It didn't work necessarily, but I will say it was more on us than on them (laughs) as far as why it didn't work. The same thing applies for our website. We've got a steady number of people coming to the website, signing up for the free trial. If they're not ready to do that or commit to that 30-day free trial period, they're downloading the guides. However, once that guide is delivered to them, you know, there's no further communication, which is a you know huge no-no as far as um, you know further education, nurturing, etc. So, big opportunity there, in in our opinion. Yeah, that is a huge opportunity. I, I could definitely see because uh, for anyone out there that might not be totally knowing the definition of lead nurturing, could you just quickly say that what is lead nurturing? Yeah, I mean, again, everybody's got their own definition, but you can call it email marketing automation. You can call it lead nurturing, but essentially, when someone comes to the website they show interest in some kind of an offer or a guide, they'll download it. They'll submit their first name, last name, email. They'll, you know, click download now. The guide then will be delivered to them. In an ideal world, of course, you know, one or two emails a week then would continue to be sent to them. So you're getting, you know, obviously presence in their email inbox. You're getting more impressions for the business. You know, those emails will hopefully be educational in nature, helping people to either, you know, plan or maybe build their campaign. And then ultimately, you know, after a handful of emails that go out that are more organic and, you know, genuinely trying to provide value to them, you would obviously invite them to, you know, trial the software for free. Yeah, that that is a huge opportunity for anyone out there, especially anyone that is really into content creation. Like I'm I'm a content guy. So I'm just like daydreaming, like, oh, my God, there's so many things I could do. with (laughs) You know, like, it's an awesome opportunity. Before we get into the traffic earnings, I have a couple more questions here. Uh, For example, do you have any employees that are working on this with you? Like, do you have a developer team to handle those tweaks or how is that all handled? Yeah, good question. So we do have a development team that we've worked with for well over three years, might even be going into year four. They've actually built the latest version. We're on kind of like version two, as we call it, but they've built the latest version of the software. They've also helped us with the front end. Uh, the website, I think you may have mentioned before that it is on WordPress, so it's pretty easy to manage. But they really handle all of our you know, bug fixes, support tickets, things of that nature. Anything that's technically related, I am not a technical person. I know how to put an attachment on an email, <laughs> and I know how to <laughs> you know, write, edit a blog post, so to speak, and publish a blog post in WordPress. But I'm certainly not a technical person. I know maybe enough to be dangerous some very basic HTML, not that you need to know that for this, but our development team is absolutely fantastic. We also use 
their team for our ad agency when and if we need them they're more you know on demand than anything else but they are fantastic they are affordable they are the most reliable company that we've ever worked with as far as the development team is concerned and you know they work six out of seven days and uh, super responsive and and they get it done i mean it's one of those things where it's so nice to have peace of mind where if something goes out in the development team's direction, it's going to be done within 24 hours or less, or less every time. So we do contract that work out. They are not employees; they are contractors. Outside of that, everything's basically handled by me. As far as we do blog once a week, we also outsource the content creation to a company called Blogmut. So they basically deliver one blog post a week to me, and then I'll just do some very light editing and put it into WordPress and schedule it for publishing. Very cool. I got to say, having a good development team is amazing. Our team ourselves that works on the Empire Flipper site is just an awesome team that we're working with, always improving the site with. And uh, it's kind of the same thing. They work six days out of the week as well. So yeah, it's super helpful. (laughs) Yeah, super helpful. It's one of those things where if, if you don't have that solved, you know, that aspect of the business solved, especially with a software business like this, it can be a real headache. So We've been very appreciative of their commitment to this project, and we've already given them a heads up, obviously, that ownership could be changing hands. And, you know, they just basically said we're going to continue to support it, you know, no matter what. They've got a lot of skin in the game. They're pretty emotionally tied to this since they did create it. Oh, so, so they, yeah. these, this is the same development team that actually created the software. They actually built this version. Yep, our first oh, very version, cool. which was built, yeah, five years ago, was built with a different company. They were okay, too. Oh, okay, gotcha. You know, there's nothing wrong with the first company we went with, but um, this is the company that we use in our ad agency as well. So it was just easier for us to make the decision to have them take over the second version of it. And uh, yeah, they know it intimately inside and out, both from a front end and back end standpoint. Very cool. So moving into the traffic and earnings on this site, could you give a breakdown of where your traffic is coming from? You mentioned briefly that you had some links coming from Forbes, some visitors from Forbes, but is it mainly organic? Are you doing paid ads? Is there social? What's going on here? Yeah. So about 40 to 50%, we'll call it 45% is definitely in uh, organic. Our ad agency really started 10 years ago as an SEO agency. And, you know, we quickly learned that you know, without an effective website, you can send all the traffic in the world to a domain. But if the website's not built properly, <laughs> you're not going to get any traction. So, <laughs> you know, we went more into a, an ad agency or a, a full service digital ad agency, you know, to support clients with that need. But yeah, so this site was built really around SEO. We've spent a lot of time publishing blog posts. I think a year and a half, two years ago, we were publishing three to four posts a week consistently. There are, I believe, over 350 blogs that have been published over the last four or five years. We continue, as I mentioned, to publish one blog post a week. So 45%, let's say, of traffic is organic. 25% of traffic is referral-based traffic. As I mentioned, there are a lot of, you know, dozens of articles out there on Forbes, Business Insider, Website Magazine, Formstack.com. We have an integration with them. So there are a lot of, you know, different kinds of sites out there that have articles on our software also links back to our our homepage obviously which is helpful so about 25% of the traffic is from referral traffic i'd say another 15 to 20% is going to be direct traffic and then there's a small i think less than 10% probably more like 3 to 5% is uh traffic from you know pay per click google adwords that's awesome eh? this was relatively diversified you got the organic going which very strong. And I agree with you, by the way, I've done, I, we were talking a little bit before we started, I've done SEO for a couple clients as well. <laughs> yeah, if the website is awful, no amount of SEO is going to help it usually. <laughs> right, exactly, uh, exactly, yeah. So yep. to br- break down the earning type uh, with your business here, is there just one level of paid subscription, and then there's the free subscription? Do you guys have multiple tiers? Yeah, good question. So we have Four different paid plans, so to speak. We also offer an enter. So those are published on the site. We also offer an enterprise plan for companies that simply need to capture more videos in any given month than what our published plans offer. So we do have unpublished enterprise plans for those enterprise businesses that just need a lot more bandwidth as far as the amount of videos that they're capturing. So the four paid plans as well as the enterprise plan, those are really monthly types of commitments. And then um, I think as of last year, like December, you know, tax time, end of the year, 
We offered a few of our existing customers annual plans. That is not published. I'm sure that's an opportunity that's out there. We haven't gotten around to actually publishing an annual option on our website. But uh, we did have a handful of people take the annual plan option at the end of last year. I think maybe three or four customers took that option. So that's there as well. But primarily, I'd say 90 to 95 percent of our customers are you know, opted into that monthly subscription. Very cool. And would you say the state, the earnings are pretty stable or do you have a burn rate that is uh, that you always needed to fill up with more customers? How, how does that look like? Yeah, the earnings have been very, very stable. I would say for the past probably year or so, they've you know fluctuated up or down maybe 10 or 15 percent. But all in all, they're pretty stable. Excellent. And uh, you mentioned already that you put out about one piece of content a week. How much content is on there right now? And uh, so I'm assuming you're adding about four a month then uh, on average? Yeah, we're, we're trying to be as consistent as we can. And I think we've done so this year. But yeah, about four blog posts a month on average, one per week is being published on the site. The site itself is probably six to 10 pages. You know, you've got your typical pages on the site itself, but the blog has, I believe, over 350 published posts at this point in time. Wow, that's quite a bit of content. That's awesome. For someone out there, you know, looking at this business and you're familiar with SEO, you plug that into SEM Rush, there's probably a ton of opportunity there, potentially, I would, sure. I would imagine at least. Speaking of opportunities, let's say you wanted to keep this business and you're going to, you decided to grow it for whatever reason. If you wanted the least risky path to grow it, what would you focus on? Yeah, good question. Well, I feel like there is a opportunity right now that exists with our, you know, leads, just leads who are downloading offers from the website itself as well as our free trials. So right now I think you can, you know, grow from, you know, internally grow. So for example, you know, put in some effective lead nurturing to support some of these leads that are, you know, opting into the offers on the website and then really never hearing from us again. I think there's a huge opportunity to gain more traction with those leads. That's number one. Number two is our onboarding process. What that means is, so for example, we use Intercom to handle the majority of our support tickets in app, as well as to provide in-app messages for users based on their behavior, as well as to send those email onboarding emails you know at different stages of within that 30-day trial we haven't really popped the hood and looked at that for probably a year so i think of the free trials that are currently signed up today and going forward i feel like there's a really big opportunity to optimize the onboarding process so that the emails are being sent at the right time with the right communications as well as some of those in-app messages are appearing based on their behaviors at the right time. I think there's a significant opportunity to increase our free trial to paid customer conversion. And again, we just haven't really had time to pop the hood and put together the strategy just yet. But I think the lowest hanging fruit is to, you know, grow internally uh, to take more advantage of what's currently happening on the website and within the app and the free trial environment. There's big, big, big opportunities there. The next opportunity I would say is Google AdWords. We are very cautious with Google AdWords. We've been very frugal with the amount of money we're investing in AdWords. It's not a lot every month. We have about a five to six percent click through rate on our, you know, ad impressions to clicks in our AdWords account. It's a very small account. I think there's a big opportunity to grow that just by increasing click throughs alone. I mean, the keywords we're going after are spot on. There's no wiggle room. They're 100% targeted. And if someone's looking for this software, it's right there. So just by increasing click through rates, I think that's a huge opportunity to get more of that very qualified traffic onto the website. I also think that by running that website magazine pay per lead program again and, and supporting it with nurturing. I think that's a real big opportunity. There are a lot of aggregator sites out there these days as well. For example, G2 Crowd, Get App, Captera, I believe it's called. A lot of these aggregator sites are, you know, they have an audience of software buyers that are typically, you know, either business owners or marketing directors or marketing assistants. They're actively seeking solutions to some of these needs. And uh, we haven't been as aggressive as we should have been with those aggregator sites. And they're certainly growing in popularity over the last one to two years. I mean, some of those sites have a ton of traffic on them. So I think by becoming more heavily involved with those, by you know updating the listings within those aggregator sites, by 
soliciting reviews on those aggregator sites. I think there's a big opportunity to participate more with them because they have that built-in target audience that a software like this is is looking for. Yeah, there's a ton of opportunity, it sounds like, or, that you would focus on. And now, let's say you are going to be incredibly risky here. What would you do? Would you increase AdWords very aggressively or how would you go about it? Well, I, I don't know if it's risky. I mean, yeah, with AdWords, of course, you're, you're going to want to, um, you know, invest money in those clicks. So that may be, you know, a little bit more risky, but certainly you could do that as long as it's monitored closely and tightly. I think that, you know, there's definitely more room to grow within AdWords. I think there are a plethora of other keyword opportunities you could go after that maybe aren't a 10 out of 10, but are a close, you know, seven, eight out of 10. We haven't had the appetite or the guts <laughs> to really go out and <laughs> and do that necessarily. So I, I certainly that's something you could do, but it, it, you know, risky, it, it, it's more of a time risk than a you know monetary risk. I think by investing at just a few hours, I would say, and getting to know those aggregator sites, understanding what your options are. I know you can get like premium listings and you can pay a few hundred dollars a year and annually subscribe to be included as like featured listings within those aggregator pages. So I think you could certainly do that. But I, I look at that as more of a, a time investment than a cost investment. I think it's just a matter of, you know, sitting down in a dark room and understanding the strategy involved and how much time is going to be involved with getting more, you know, participation in some of those aggregator sites and putting together the lead nurturing, putting together the strategy for onboarding it. To me, for me, it's more of a time investment than a cost investment. Yeah, that makes sense. As far as the biggest risk to this business, what would you say that a buyer should be aware of? I think one of our biggest issues, and it really hasn't even been that big of an issue, so I don't want to you know, overemphasize it, but it certainly is a risk. And I think this applies, it's really not for just us. I think it applies to all web-based software. It's just compatibility issues. So you know, between so many operating systems and so many browsers, we don't get a whole lot of support tickets. Our software was built with simplicity in mind, both for the person recording a video testimonial, but also for the business or the marketing person who's managing the initiative. It's really simple. It's very easy to use. I would say out of the two to three support tickets a week that we have to manage, the lion's share of them have to do with compatibility issues. If it's not like a strategic in nature type of a question, it's usually a compatibility issue. Something's not working because it's a very specific version of you know, this operating system with this version of Chrome or that version of Firefox or this version of you know, IE. So one of our biggest frustrations, and again, it hasn't even been that big of a frustration, but the Achilles heel, I think, and this really applies globally, I would say, you know, to all web-based software, but it's just keeping up to speed with compatibility and keeping in front of those, you know, versions of browsers that get updated. So I think that's kind of been our, our biggest challenge is just, you know, making sure that customers are taking care of if they have a problem, if something's not working within the app or if they're on a mobile phone or a tablet. I mean, people are using all sorts of devices these days to manage these campaigns. So there's so many different, you know, probably hundreds of different types of variations of browsers and operating systems. So to me, that's the biggest risk. And again, I think it applies to all web-based software, but it's just making sure that, you know, people are getting the functionality that, you know, they originally signed up for, that the functions within the app are working properly across, you know, all browsers and operating systems. I think you hit the nail on the head there with just how important the right development team is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it really, you know, 24 hour or less turnaround, it's, it's been great. And, and people, you know, you think about when you're, one of the things that we've done really well is, you know, immediately when a ticket comes in, we personally respond. I personally respond to it. And again, it's not that time consuming. We're talking about two to three tickets a week on average. But we respond personally immediately. We let people know at least that we're on it. You know, you've passed the ball in the, our direction. We've caught that ball and we're now going to run with it. People just like to know that they've been heard. So it's one of the things that we really strive to do well. And uh, with the development team that's so proactive and so intimately familiar with the software itself, you know, they're usually on it within 24 hours or less. And it hasn't been that much of a, you know, painful part for us to manage that. But, you know, certainly one of those things where you always try to tune in and stay ahead of some of those changes and compatibility testing is obviously so important. The good news is the lion's share has been done. 
you know, those types of tickets are more infrequent today than they ever have been. But, you know, that that does happen. You know, those types of things do happen. So it's something to be aware of. For sure. Uh, moving into the work required to maintain this business, can you describe the amount and type of work you're actually doing to maintain the software and the business in general? Like, what is your weekly task or daily task that you're doing? Yeah, yeah, good question. So I, I guess we'll start with weekly. So on a weekly basis, as I mentioned, two to three support tickets a week. Some week you have no support tickets. Other week you, weeks you might have four or five. But I would say on average, two to three is a safe bet. Typically, a support ticket is going to require about, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to sound, I, I don't want to underestimate, but let, let's say five to 10 minutes of support ticket. I mean, you're answering the person's call, you know, ticket, you're letting them know that you're on it. You're forwarding that off to the development team. They handle it, get back, let you know that it's done. And then you're notifying the customer that or the free trial user that it's been taken care of. So let, let's say 10 minutes or so per support ticket. The other thing I do on a weekly basis is we do publish, as we talked about, one blog post a week. So the content creation itself is outsourced to Blogmut. They come up with anywhere from about 400 to 600 words for a blog post. I then take that, edit it just so that it's kind of in our own voice so it's consistent. And it's not a really specific or fun or any type of a voice. It's just pretty straightforward. It's almost kind of vanilla in a way, but it's pretty matter of fact. You can you know, look at our blog and it's pretty matter of fact. It's kind of fun. It's a little bit of a marketing spin on things, but we then take that, edit it, put it into WordPress. We optimize it, obviously, as far as the meta title, meta keyword, and meta description within WordPress. You can do that all right there on that one page. And then we typically schedule it to post you know, the following week. So that might be an hour or so a week to do that. I mean, frankly, I've gotten that down to about 20 or 30 minutes, but I'd say an hour on average, especially if you're new to doing that weekly. On a weekly basis, I typically pop into our Google AdWords account, look at it for 10 to 15 minutes. It's pretty much settled in and, and pretty good to go every once in a while. I'll put a different ad variation out there to you know split test different ads, but 10 to 15 minutes a week on AdWords is pr pretty much all I do. And then um, the one thing that I will do, not really daily, but maybe every other day, is um, typically every day we have new free trial users. We have people signing up for the free trial. So what I'll do, and again, I think there's an opportunity here to automate this, and it's been on my agenda for you know way longer than I'd like to admit, but what I'll do is I'll record a video for them. So they sign up for the free trial. Within 24 to 48 hours later, I'll actually go into their campaign and record a welcome video. So it's, you know, hi, just want to say welcome to our software. And if you need any help with building or promoting your upcoming campaign, here's how you can get in touch with us. And, you know, best of luck. And we hope to hear from you soon. So I try to, you know, number one, every, you know, the, the video is a magic component here. When people see those results, they're more inclined to commit to a paid plan. So by doing this, we're kind of getting them going in the right direction and we're, we're a lot, their usage within the software grows deeper and deeper as they, oh, wow, they have a video and they get an email saying, hey, you have a new video and it allows them to go back into the app, of course, log back. Just to ask, that, that is like a personalized video then for each customer that signs up that you would like to do? Yeah, so that that literally takes me thirty seconds per video. It's probably a three minute ordeal because you've got to you know click through right. to their campaign, record a video. You know you can review it. I'm I'm I no longer review my videos. It is what it is. I mean I used to be all you know concerned about you know how I look, <laughs> the environment I'm in, and all you know. But I'll do that from my office or from a coffee shop these days, and I'll apologize for the background noise, and I'll say something like, "This is a good example of how not to record a video." Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, right now it is personal. It's, you know, hi, Jane, thanks for signing up to the free trial. I'll also, we get notified through Intercom when people are slipping away. So right now when people, we have defined slipping away as haven't logged into the app in over 30 days. So the moment that happens, we get notified. I will submit a second video to them and just say, hi, Jane. Notice it's been about a month or so since you logged into our app, wanted to reach back out to you, see if there's anything we can do to assist. That slipping away video, as we call it, helps to you know re-engage them, to invite them back into the app. We see that working very well. But as I mentioned, it is personalized and there is an opportunity to automate that. We have talked to our development team about it. It would take them about an hour to you know implement that functionality within the app. So you can certainly automate that piece as well. But um, I would really say 
probably 15 minutes a week, you know, every day or every other day, you know, as soon as I can get to it, as far as the welcome videos are concerned and the slipping away videos are concerned, I would say maybe 15 minutes a week at best. I like that idea. You know, I I believe it was Shopify when they first began, they actually did something very similar where like the CEO or something would send a personalized welcome email. You know, this is back before they had thousands of customers, but uh, when they were still very small, they were doing that. So I always liked that idea of personalization. Sure. Sure. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the personalization, you know, to be honest, I don't know if the personalization in this example, I don't know if it's, it's a high gain item. I really do feel like it's that video it's the delivery and the creation of that video within their account that furthers their engagement and really furthers their appetite and excitement for getting a video, a real video testimonial from a customer. I mean, I really think that it's just the, that action that does it. So the personalization is cool and it, it may, may go, you know, a certain distance and it may be valuable to them, but you can certainly automate that. And the result would eff- effectively be the same. They get that new video they come back into the app, they watch it, they're excited, they understand the functionality of embedding that or including it in what we call our playlist or downloading it for editing purposes. They get to really start to experience you know, what they can do with that result. And I think that's really where the light bulb goes on. I mean, we really feel like the customer gets activated or the free trial user can get activated once they see the power of the video. Yeah, definitely. Just to recap here, your weekly duties more or less is the blog post, ticketing, and then these welcome videos when you get a chance to do it when a new customer comes on board, and as well as the slipping away video. Correct. Yeah, and and some very light AdWords management. Again, it just depends on how far you want to take AdWords. But yeah, maybe 10 to 15 minutes a week with managing our AdWords campaign as well. What's your estimate of your total time that you spend a week on this business? Well, I'm ashamed to disclose the real amount of time that I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> invest because it's so minimal. But I think to be safe coming into this for the first time, getting to know everything, I mean, honestly, I think, you know, three hours a week would be more than ample time to at least do the minimal effective dose that I'm currently doing. Not to say that that should continue. I think there's probably <laughs> a lot more to do. But as far as just, you know, status quo and, and keeping things moving in the right direction, you know, three hours a week between as you mentioned, blog post, new video and slipping away videos, support tickets and AdWords management. I think three hours a week is ample time just, again, to keep status quo. Now, what skills or requirements would you say that someone should have that are not familiar with this niche? I think, you know, the blogging component is a big one. I think the ability to, you know, edit four to 600 words. If you're going to have that content creation outsourced, I think editing just very minor editing, but nonetheless, editing is important. I think the basic knowledge of putting, you know, a Word document, copying and pasting that in, I know it sounds funny, but copying and pasting that into a WordPress blog post, that's important. I think the basic knowledge of, you know, scheduling the blog post, not that you have to, but I certainly feel like just general WordPress blogging is important for this. I think communication, surprise, surprise, is important. I think, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think being able to just simply put out a, you know, a good response, a good response to someone asking a question is, is very important. A timely response, I think, is most important. Communicating that information, forwarding emails off to the development team is important. What else? I think beneficial would be some AdWords familiarity. I think, you know, beneficial would be some lead nurturing familiarity, some automation, whether it's with MailChimp or with Active Campaign, or, you know, I think there's something called um, Get Response, if I'm not mistaken, AWeber, you know, some sort of an automated email marketing platform and knowledge of that would be very beneficial. Intercom knowledge would be a definite, you know, bonus, I think. That's very easy, I will say. Intercom's been fantastic and their support is good. But just some basic knowledge, perhaps, of of Intercom would be good. Although if if you can manage a MailChimp or a a Aweber or an active campaign, you know, Intercom's basically the same thing. So I think those would all be very beneficial things as well. Excellent. So to wrap this up, uh, would you be willing to sign a non-compete that basically said, hey, look, I'm not going to go out and create the same exact software after you buy it for me? Uh, Yeah. Uh, Yes, absolutely. I, I think that would be the right thing to do. So, yep. Cool. How much support would you be willing to offer a buyer? 
Um, I'm happy to offer, you know, let's say 30 days email support, a handful of hours over the phone if needed. I think the buyer is going to find this incredibly straightforward. I'm a very non-technical person. I know enough to be dangerous, but I really lean on our development team to do a <laughs> lot of the technical aspects of the business. So as long as the buyer is familiar with email and communication 101, you know, I just don't see them needing a ton of support, but I'm more than happy to do a few hours of phone consultation, you know, if required, absolutely. And we can say 30 days of email support, certainly. And, you know, basically whatever it takes within 30 days to ensure that the buyer's confident and that this software will, you know, hopefully grow to that next level. So obviously the best case scenario here for you and for Empire Flippers is for someone to come and buy this business at full list price. But let's say someone came in and they wanted to do 70% up front, 30% on closing or some kind of other earn out deal structure. Would you at all be open to that? Yeah, it's a great question. At this time, I would say probably not only because, you know, we've thought long and hard about this decision and we're really looking to part ways with it at this point. So for us, there's no gray area. It's either, you know, we part ways and, you know, hopefully hand it off to someone who can, you know, take it and run with it and, you know, do better than we have in the previous few years. And if it doesn't sell at, you know, full asking or whatever it is, we'll probably, you know, take it back under management and, and try to find some time maybe next year to kind of, you know, do it ourselves. But I think at this point for us, you know, outside of that 30 day period, we'd really like it to be black and white and, you know, 100% handoff. So before I ask you my last question here, Sean, just to give a quick summary wrap up again of the business for everyone out there watching this, this business was built in April 2011, has a monthly revenue of $2,511 with expenses sitting at $828 and a total net profit of 1683 And that is, of course, is a six month average. This sale also includes the domain hosting and marketing accounts, as well as a Stripe payment merchant account. So Sean, what is your best pitch in 30 seconds or less on why someone should purchase this business? Well, I do feel like it's a great opportunity to own you know, what's currently a, a highly passive, easy to run software as a service business, where you know most, if not all, the heavy lifting has already been done. But I do feel like there's plenty of room for growth. And it is within the you know video marketing niche, which has been and probably will continue to be you know the most engaging medium of communication on the web. Yeah, that's a great pitch. Uh, so for those people out there watching on YouTube or uh, Daily Motion or somewhere else, and you want more information, the link below this video will take you to our actual marketplace listing for this business. Now, if you're watching this on the listing and you want more information, you can become a depositor today. All you have to do is click make a deposit. Super easy. And we'll send you some information on your way. So Sean, thank you for coming on, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Likewise. Thanks so much, Greg.